jump in because we really have to get through our last two questions quickly. And this is one from, uh, and it will require translation, but it's from Eka uh, Unawati. Yeah, terima kasih. Di translate. Uh, dari tadi kita membicarakan tentang demokrasi yang dimana katanya Indonesia adalah merupakan demokrasi terbesar dan tapi pelanggaran HAM masih di mana-mana. Tadi membicarakan tentang korupsi, korupsi yang terus merajalela yang saya rasa nggak bisa dihapus karena semua terlibat korupsi. Okay, we'll, we'll go for our translation. Thank you very much. There are still many human rights abuses in Indonesia and corruption is a big problem. Pertanyaan saya adalah Prabowo adalah salah satu calon kandidat Presiden Republik Indonesia. Sedangkan Prabowo adalah salah satu orang yang melakukan pelanggaran HAM terberat yang sudah diakui secara internasional dan Prabowo sendiri sudah mengakuinya. Thank you. We'll better get our, we better get to our translator again there. Sorry. Prabowo Subianto is a candidate for election as president in the next in the elections coming up next year. But um, he is suspected of involvement in the human rights abuses in Trisakti in 1998. Okay, we, we might get you to wind Dan up pertanya, your question quickly. Go ahead. Pertanyaan saya adalah bagaimana hubungan internasional Australia dan Indonesia seandainya nanti Prabowo menjadi presiden Republik Indonesia. <laughs> That's the question we'd like to ask. <laughs> Okay, now for, our, for our audience in Australia, we better get the translation of the final. Go. How will this affect relations between Australia and Indonesia if in the future Prabowo becomes the president of Indonesia? Okay, well, Tim Lindsay, I'll just start with you. We'll keep our answers brief. Uh, well, it's, it's hard because Prabowo is a quite a notorious figure in the world. Prabowo is a, is a cashiered general who uh, was thrown out of the army for his involvement in human rights abuses in, in 1998. And former, he's a strong candidate And, for and a former son-in-law of President Suharto. So, you know, we've got a zombie prime minister in Australia back from the dead. Uh, Prabowo's got a hope too, I would have thought, <laughs> in Indonesia. Uh, he, at the moment, is... Uh, one of the most popular candidates. Uh, I think he's been polling right up the top of all the candidates. It, there's a, the possibility the former, the current mayor of Jakarta, if he runs, might be the only person who could beat Prabowo. So uh, the US has refused Prabowo a, an entry, a visa entry on human rights issues. If he becomes president, uh, look, it's going to be a serious problem for Indonesia's image right around the world internationally, and it will be read by many as a return to nationalist, military-oriented past. Now, whether the system uh, allows that to happen, whether he's elected is one question. The second question is whether the democratic process that's been put in place would contain and control such a leader in Indonesia. Maybe it could, but it certainly would cause significant international problems. OK, brief answers all round. Rafendi. Yes, indeed. Uh, con whoever the president is, even Prabowo become a president, there is something you cannot stop. That's the, 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 the lay down, the, 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 the foundation of democracy is already there. That means even Prabowo will have to deal with this. They will have to deal with the forces of the civil society, with the forces of a vibrant media, with the forces of all kind of parameter of democracy. If he's trying to stop it, he will, he will, he will go down. Yuli, um, you heard the sort of frisson of uh, laughter and I would say uncomfortable laughter when the name was mentioned, but uh, it's a real possibility that he could be president. No, I have faith in the Indonesian uh, constituency. Uh, let's have the elections and I'm willing to bet money that he's not <laughs> going to make it. Yeni. <laughs> well, you know, I go down to the grassroots very often, and I would uh, testify that Prabowo is an immensely, immensely popular figure. That, uh, to what Tim said, was right. That uh, the only one who can beat him is the mayor, uh, is the governor of Jakarta. But if he's not running, then Prabowo would uh, surely win the election. There are attempts by many political parties to try to block him from running because his party will not be able to get the 20%. I, I, I think from uh, today's polling, to suggests that yeah, prison. that he will not uh, be able to get the 20% uh, uh, votings necessary for him to get uh, to get nominated. Okay. But if he does, or if it, if he can uh, uh, call up a, a, a coalition together, then he might be the the primary contender. Um, I'll just hear from Dewi on this briefly because we've really got uh, time for one last question after this and we need to move on to it. I, I think it would be 
a, a major challenge uh, in, in both within Indonesia and also Indonesia's relations with many, many countries. But this is then, you know, uh, a major question in democracy. Democracies do not always yield the best results. So um, anything can happen uh, because in a democracy, it is not the best that gets selected, but the most popular. And, and, and as Ahieni said, you know, the, the view of sophisticated urbanites are sometimes quite different from the views from people in the rural area. So, but on the other hand, uh, the question remains that Indonesia is only going to become stronger, hopefully. Uh, and Indonesia is already a member of the G20, and it's a member of many, many international organizations. Now, you're almost forecasting our last question, so I'll yeah. interrupt you. We've got time for this one last question. It comes from Elisa uh, Pedrana. Uh, it is predicted that by 2030, Indonesia will have the 10th largest economy in the world. Who will be their allies as they rise to a new super status power? Will it be their regional neighbours, Australia and other Southeast Asian countries, or the Mu Muslim brothers uh, in Malaysia and the Middle East? Demas. Who will be our allies? Who will, yeah. <laughs> Who will you be closest to in Who the future? Who are we allied to now? Well, if, if you leave it to SBY, we'll have zero enemies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I think um, whether now or then, 2015, 2050, I think uh, our, our allies and by our primary allies will be countries which we share common values with. Uh, you know, economic development only goes so far. And that's why I think we should look at Indonesia-Australia relations in a positive manner because I think we're, we're going from the same starting point now, which is we are both democracies. We respect human rights and civil rights. It's not perfect, but we look at it the same way. Um, there's a long way to go. So I think it will still be that. Those countries with common values with Indonesia. Okay, we're, uh, we're in danger of losing our satellite. Tim, a brief answer. Uh, I, I think Indonesia and Australia are not yet fully aware that they're actually natural partners in this new world that's emerging, emerging with the rise of China and the US. Uh, we are, will both end up being people, countries that aren't entirely committed to either of those, but which need both of them. We're both going to be democracies. We're both going to be open liberal societies. We've both got problems. We are actually natural strategic partners and we're going to be forced into this partnership, whether we like it or not, so we should try and do it well and Tim, quick. I think that's actually a good time, a good place for us to leave it. That's all we have time for tonight. Please thank our panel. Yeni Wahi, Dimas, Dewi Fortuna Anwar, Yuli Ismatono, Rafendi Jarman and Tim Lindsay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a very special thanks to our wonderful audience here in Jakarta and our partners at Metro TV News and ABC International. Please give yourself a quick round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have to get in before the satellite leaves. Uh, next Monday night, we're back in Australia with the new Deputy Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Coalition frontbencher, Malcolm Turnbull. Writer and comedian, Kareen Grant. The Australian's cartoonist, Bill Leake, and policy analyst, Miriam Lyons. Until then, salamat malam dan sampai jumpa. <laughs>